Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, I was just having a nice cold glass of uh, hydrogen peroxide and uh, I was looking through some of these old lawsuits from uh, Konami and Roxor and uh, yeah, I thought it would be kind of fun to click through a couple of these. So I, I think the start of this whole thing was when uh, Konami filed a lawsuit against a company called Andamiro. Uh, Andamiro makes a game called Pump It Up. Uh, it's pretty popular. Uh, maybe not as popular as Dance Dance Revolution, at least not in America. So they, they had this, they filed this lawsuit. At the same time, uh, Andamiro, I guess, countersued Konami in California, claiming that uh, DDR had violated their copyright for Pump It Up. So there's like dueling lawsuits, apparently. I, I can't really find all the details for these but they both like settled them together and they didn't really release any details so this is kind of coming from wikipedia konami and anamiro sued each other over ddr and pump it up and then they just settled somehow and both games kind of like move forward and they behave very similarly so after five minutes of Googling, I cannot find the Konami v. Andamiro lawsuit, but I did find what looks like the Andamiro v. Konami lawsuit. So plaintiff filed an action against defendants alleging the Konami's arcade and home console foot movement video games infringes on U.S. patent number. Let's pull up that patent. So they're suing for this patent, which is video exercise or game floor controller with position indicating foot pads. Operation of a video game or exercise system utilizing a video display in enhance, is enhanced by a floor controller utilizing weight sensitive pads that allows the operator to input information into the system by locating his feet in the specific portions of the floor controller. So Andamiro has this patent, which is crazy. Okay, I. So <laughs> now I understand why Andamiro sued Konami back. Uh, but what patent does Konami have that they sued? Uh, let's look at this patent a little bit more. So first of all, there's a picture here. This looks like a a DDR machine, but this is this is Andamiro's patent. So let's say it's pump it up machine, and there is a a bug, maybe a cupcake, and another cupcake that says splat. And there's a data, CPU, a video controller, program, and interface, and then it looks like a dance pad here with all sorts of panels. Okay, this looks familiar except for all the food and the bugs. And in the schematics here as well, it also mentions <laughs> uh, the bugs in the food. Let's see. Display picnic background. Generate bug. Move bugs toward goal. Read the foot status. Bug on activated pad. Display splat. Take away food. Bug at food? Okay, <laughs> this is like a fever dream. What is this? All right, so from what I'm gl skimming here, this is really just like a very generic patent on like using your foot to control a game is really. And then this weird game where in the patent where they talk about like a bug in food at like a picnic and you're using the control to the controller to like kill the bugs to save the food <laughs> all right so it's it's a very generic patent uh can we find konami's patent what is konami's patent dude these patent drawings are so crazy this guy's rocking out <laughs> Like, oh, look at his face. Okay, <laughs> I think I finally found DD, uh, Konami's DDR patent. I think there's going to be, there's many patents, to be honest. I don't think it's just, like, one. But here's Konami's. Uh, Rhythm sensations can be represented in time to music by using the entire body and create powerfulness and rhythm sensations. And the stepping position instruction contents are scrolled and displayed on a monitor by a scroll display control section, thereby performing instructions of the stepping position and the stepping operation timing. Wow. So this must be translated. 
there's really okay all right so let's see the pictures here so this is a uh, that's a cool looking DDR machine I like the little trusses and stuff I don't think that ever happened uh, the pads are way too close to the machine but it's that's a good looking machine and that's actually it actually looks like there's only, there's nine panels it's hard to tell oh yeah look it looks like an offset bracket inside of a panel okay Oh, look at the guys. Okay, let's take a moment here. So we have reverse scroll. There's a guy doing a little breakdance move. Two players. So this is really for the entire machine. So this is like a very, like this makes sense to me. But I think a specific part of this patent is, you know, it's an arcade machine, but the arrows are scrolling and then you hit them at a certain time. Now this patent was, so this is Konami's patent, and it was filed in, looks like, applied in 1998. All right, back to Andamiro's patent of the exercise game floor controller with the the weight sensitive stuff and the food bug game. That was 1985 in the U.S. So Andamiro files this one with their bug game in 1985 and then Konami comes around in 1998 what wait a second that's uh 13 13 years later Andamiro files their weird arcade weight sensing bug foot game thing and then 13 years later Konami makes their dance game apparatus uh, scrolling patent. So, okay, so Konami was way later than Andamira on this. So then they sue each other. Konami sues Andamiro, which I guess was the patent was 13 years earlier, for infringing on Dance Dance Revolution, and then the court found in Konami's favor, which is crazy. Um, but I guess because their pat the Andamira's patent didn't talk about the scrolling. But then at the same time, it seems like Andamiro then countersued against Konami, and they were both settled, and they both made some sort of agreement that nobody really knows about. But it seems like they were like, <clears throat> I'm just, like, I, I don't know anything about this, but if I had to guess, that agreement was like, maybe somebody pays somebody a little bit of money, both companies can keep their product lines going, and we're just not going to sue each other going forward. Like, that's just a guess. So yeah, I don't know. There's not a lot of information about these lawsuits going back and forth between uh, Konami and Andamiro. Uh, but yeah, that seems like that's the end of the story there. Now, Konami then uh, later sues another company called Roxor, and that's what that was in the groove. Now, for those who don't know, in the groove is uh, it was kind of like a clone of DDR with a lot of improvements. As somebody who plays in the groove, I mean, there's a lot of differences um, compared to DDR, but it is four panel. It scrolls the same ex same exact way. It was released as an upgrade kit onto existing DDR machines. So, I mean, you know, like hardware compatible, just swap out a the CPU essentially. And it was like a it was like a PS2 game. They released it on PS2. So you know, really, like th this new ITG, which many thought was like an improvement on DDR, was seen as like uh, you know, like eating Konami's lunch a little bit, like you know, kind of taking over their space. People were converting their cabs over to In the Groove from DDR, and. Um, Konami uh, does what Konami does and sued uh, sued Roxor. So it, see, it looks like here uh, Konami sues Roxor, Mad Cat, and Red Octane. I think each one of them had like a little bit of part in in the Groove's distribution. So in the beginning of the complaint, they're talking about like what Konami is and what DDR is, and so it's like you know this we're like an international leader in arcade and video games the landmark DDR game swept the arcade and video game industry off its feet wow they had newspapers and magazines talking about DD the groundbreaking DDR game wow many fan websites are devoted to DDR game including the popular DDR freak 
It's so weird that that gets a mention. Is that still up? It is still up. I think it's like read only though. I don't think you can do anything with it. Man, this this website was like the shit back in the day. I I I used to love this website. The people on the forums were the worst though. <laughs> I remember being on there and I was like, "Oh, you guys are dicks." So, yeah, DDR Freak, it's got the user chat boards, um, machine locations. Wow, they really love DDR Freak. Okay, we know what DDR is. We get it. The plaintiff recently learned that Defendant Roxor is selling and distributing its In the Groove video arcade game, ITG game, through the refitting of, of DDR cabinets. Specifically, Roxor is manufacturing and selling kits that refit the DDR game. That's, yeah, I, I, is that, I, I, I'm surprised that that is illegal. You know, it's like, okay, we're selling an upgrade kit for something that, you know, an arcade owner buys a machine from Konami, right? for like 10 grand or 15 grand or something they're not cheap and then somebody like you know the game ages over time people are kind of sick of it konami isn't selling an upgrade so another company sells an upgrade for it i i don't know that seems great to me i don't it doesn't seem like it should be illegal but let's read on Plaintiff is also aware that the defendant Red Octane has recently begun selling and distributing the ITG for PS2 game. Okay, so Red Octane is doing the PS2 game, and that's why they're in the lawsuit. And then Mad Cats is distributing a home video game software under the name MC Grooves Dance Craze. Dude, I have no idea what Dance Craze is. Uh, what the heck is this? This looks terrible. I, how do you play this? Does, do the arrows like come from the center? You ask, you look right Somehow that was included in this lawsuit. I, I have never seen that game before, but now I need to try it. All right, so patent infringement by Roxor. Let's, let's see what Roxor did. Plaintiff, also known as Konami, is the sole owner of US patent whatever dance game apparatus and step on base for dance game. Oh, they're flexing their patent. So they believe that Roxer's ITG game literally infringes either directly or indirectly on the patent. God, this is this part's really annoying. They just keep talking about how they own so many trademarks for different things. It's like almost it seems like it's repeating itself. Plaintiff has used the DDR mark. It's like nowhere in this has Roxer like used the DDR mark. Like they're not selling it as like DDR2 or something. It's in the groove. It's a different game. Roxer provides materials bearing its own name and or trademarks to purchasers of the ITG game to be placed over the plaintiff's marks. What's wrong with that? I mean, I, look, I, okay, like whether or not the games are similar or one is a clone of the other, like you're buying uh, a, a hardware box that is d different from the hardware box that they have that is a different game, it's different software on it, and you're putting like you know the name of the game that you bought I, I that's that, that I understand that like one might be a copy of the other but this seems like a weird charge to put in the complaint oh okay I, now I see what they're saying they're saying on uh, in some cases purchasers fail to cover the plaintiff's marks and other identifier material okay so it it's not that it's illegal to cover you know the DDR with the ITG mark in some cases, people weren't putting, they weren't covering up the DDR one. Roxer targets the same consumers. It's like, okay, yeah, they're an arcade company too. Roxer's use of the name and her trademarks with the RTG game, also bearing the plaintiff's marks, is likely to confuse customers. Oh, so they're saying that some people might think that, like, In the Groove is sponsored by. Like, could could all of this been been solved if they just. If Roxer selling ITG put like a little disclaimer like this is not this has nothing to do with DDR or Konami we're not related it's so weird like uh, so much of this complaint is about rocks are using DDR's trademark but they really didn't like they like the complaints for this are like oh you can upgrade your DDR machine to this oh you used our trademark or some of the installers didn't put the the uh, marquee header on. Oh, if you're gonna confuse customers, you didn't install. You know, you're infringing on a trademark. And it's like, Roxer had nothing to do with that. These parts of the lawsuit seem like a stretch. Roxer's conduct const 
constitutes unfair competition, false advertising, false designation of origin, and false or misleading description of fact in violation of the Lanham Act. At least some of the ITG games display Roxer's name and or trademarks in close proximity to the plaintiff's marks. I, I don't know what they're talking about here, but like maybe you replace the header on your up, you get your upgrade kit, it comes with the, with the new uh, PC, you put the header on your DDR machine, but in your arcade, maybe the pads like have their little decals on the side and they still say DDR. And they're, they're like, oh, that's, you know, you're now infringing on our rights because you're selling this game as a DDR game when it's not. So then there's a section about trade dress, and I honestly cannot understand it, but Roxer is refitting the DDR games, which embodies plaintiff's trade dress with its ITG game circuit board is likely to confuse customers. So I guess what they're saying here is that you're like dressing as the company, like you're you're making people believe that you are part of Konami by taking on the way that they present themselves in an arcade. You know, it, it really makes, makes it seem like reading this that like ITG was like, oh, hey, we're like DDR version 3, you know, but by Konami. Yeah, Konami says thumbs up and uh, buy our kit. But really, that's that's not what, what this was. This was like, you know, an upgrade kit for people to like get people interested in like a different software that ran on the same hardware. Yeah, I mean, in fact, this is all about trademark. Oh, here we go. Count eight. Patent infringement by Mad Cats. Maybe we'll get into like the actual like copying of the game. Because copying the trademark thing, I, 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 you know, I'm an ITG fanboy. It doesn't seem like it's infringing on Konami's trademark. They weren't selling it as Dance Dance Revolution in any way that I can tell. But what is clear to me is it's a clone of the game, you know. So like, talk about that for a little bit. Let's see if we get into there. So, Mad Cat's Dance Craze. Oh, it's this stupid dance craze. What the hell is this game? Did this even make money? Okay, that was the <laughs> section on the dance craze thing. It's like, that's the only thing Mad Cat's has mentioned in this stupid game that nobody played. And then Red Octane. Okay, so the ITG game for PS2 is distributed by Red Octane. And that's infringing on the rights. <laughs> Oh, because you're selling... Okay, here we go. So we're selling games embodying the patented inventions as claimed by... Here's what they're actually saying. That, like, you know, we have the patent and somebody is selling a game that kind of copies our patent. Which seems to be, like, the only legitimate thing in here, in my opinion. Despite the filing of this lawsuit against Roxor, based on its ITG game... Defendant Roxor and now Red Octane have now released, promoted, and toured with the infringing ITG for PS2 home version, causing irreparable harm to Konami, for which Konami has no adequate remedy by law. So, they're, like, you know, we tried to sue you and uh, you still released your home version. So, they want Roxor to account for all gains or profits or advantages derived by Roxor in a result of its infringement. So like, tell us how much money you made and then award us damages. We've got to have money. And then award them damages based on the reputation of Konami and the goodwill and trademarks. And then take everyone in Roxor and its officers, agents, employees, representatives, and all pers people involved with it and directly ban them from manufacturing, importing, offering for sale, causing to be sold these products. Anything that infringes on this. So like anyone who was involved with rocks or had this like blanket like you are banned from making anything that infringes on this patent. Which might come into play later. Then they want Roxor to destroy all of its like assets, uh, the signs, packaging, print materials. So that's really it. I mean, wow, it's a lot of it is trademark and uh, just a little bit of it is pat patent infringement to, to my eye. So what came from this? Roxor settled with Konami. Part of the settlement was Konami got all of the intellectual rights from In The Groove. So Konami like absorbed this game that we all love 
and then just like destroyed it. It would be pretty pretty funny if Konami did something with it again. Like if Konami just like released, you know, in the groove three, you know, like <laughs> fifteen, twenty years later. Yeah, they just they, they own it now. So if if anyone wants to own in the groove, you gotta buy it from Konami, I guess. So it, you know, that lawsuit happened and you know, there was a very influential person who was kind of running Rockstar at the time, which is Kyle Ward. He made music and made the game and was like the, the business lead. He was like the guy from In the Groove. He then went on to make a new dance game. We didn't know what it was at first. At some point, he mentioned on his Facebook, like, oh, I'm going to Konami for like a business meeting. And wouldn't it be great if I brought In the Groove back? I remember that post. Much later, he announced Step Maniacs. Well, I don't think he's really said exactly what happened in that meeting with Konami. If you know anything about uh, Step Mania X, I gotta stop saying that. If you know anything about Step Maniacs, Step Maniacs doesn't have any hit targets on the top. So this is something that Suji pointed out to me. There's, uh, if you think about uh, DDR, ITG, Step Mania, there are these targets. In, and specifically, they're the same things that are shown in the pictures in the patent. You can see them here. So the targets are these arrows at the bottom. In this case, it's reverse scroll. There are these arrows there, and as the notes go over the target, that's when you're supposed to hit the arrow. That is like core to this patent. And in uh, Step Maniacs, there is just a line there. There is not like a target of like you know, this is what the arrow looks like and it goes over it. And it seems like that is like the core thing that allows that game to not get sued by Konami. So far, at least. And I'm I'm just guessing, but I would assume that that meeting that he had in Japan with the Konami folks was like, you know, hey, this is my game. Uh, I just want to underline th th it works this way and it's not infringing on your patent. Oh my God! That's my assumption, but... Shortly after that, Step Maniacs uh, came to be. He started making his own hardware. There's no upgrade kits. Uh, there's no PS2 home version. It's kind of like its own market of like, uh, you know, like smaller arcades in the U.S. who want to buy dance arcade games for fitness mostly and, you know, put them around. So it's, it's kind of interesting. It's like Step Maniacs is, uh, it's similar to In the Groove, it's similar to DDR, but it's, it's kind of its own market in a place that, in this case, doesn't eat Konami's lunch. It's not Konami's market anymore. Konami does have a place in for their dance games in the United States, but it's very limited compared to what it was when the In the Groove lawsuit happened. Back then in 2005 and before, uh, DDR was pretty popular and they were selling a lot of those machines in the US. But there, you know, there was kind of a drought after that lawsuit where DDR really wasn't getting upgraded here very much. And uh, we stopped getting like the Japanese cabinets and we started getting, uh, what's that company? All the cabinets that suck. Raw Thrills. Raw Thrills was making the DDR cabinets for America and they were just like trash. People stopped paying attention to DDR really it became it kind of fell out of favor only recently like the white cabs and uh, the, some some extent the gold cabs started popping back up in some of the big arcades Dave and Buster's and round one but you know you really don't see any white cabinets or any like newer cabinets from Konami in smaller arcades like you don't see them in bowling alleys like you used to see them with the old DDRs so the distribution network for Konami has kind of changed. Konami's like, yeah, we don't really care that much about the American arcade market because it's not as... Who knows why? I don't know. But Kyle Ward is kind of going at that small arcade market. You're not really seeing Step Maniacs machines in Dave & Buster's or Round 1. You're seeing them in small little places, uh, trampoline parks and you know bowling alleys and schools and you know weird stuff like that. And a lot of a lot of homes too, um, you know. Th the best thing you can buy from Konami in your home is like the DDR dedicated uh, soft pad, which is uh, looks terrible. I I, I got to buy one of those and, and test it out. It's kind of an interesting thing, you know. Like Step Maniacs exists now, and um, it doesn't have hit targets, and uh, and neither does the other games that uh, Kyle Ward worked on, like. Um, like re rave and, and stuff like that. Like it it he cleverly went around the patents that Konami has. 
But now, now that like we've looked at that from a high level, it's so interesting to me to go all the way back to the first lawsuit with from Konami to Animira over Pump It Up, arguably the second most popular like dance game. You know, is Pump It Up, and uh, you know, Pump It Up's still around, unlike in the Groove. You know, they Pump It Up. In Endemiro, they had this other patent that was before DDR, a long time before DDR, that they held, and you know they sued each other and they just made some sort of deal that like they they both lived on, and for whatever reason ITG just uh, it didn't work out that way, and it just got consumed by Konami and then just tossed in the trash, so. <laughs> it's kind of a depressing ending, but yeah, that's what happened with, with ITG. Colloquially, ITG still lives on in Stepmania. Like, really, uh, modern Stepmania play on pad, we call it ITG, even though it's technically not. But it's like, you know, there isn't a company, in this case Roxor, making money uh, selling anything uh, anymore. It's just like open source Stepmania built in a way that reproduces ITG. It, it, it certainly was disappointing at the time when the lawsuit happened, but uh, the the world that has kind of grown around that void now is uh, is a great one. And uh, there's really a lot of people are like finding their way into dance games, especially with like the uh, the pandemic and stuff. I mean, that's kind of like pushed more people into that whole world I think than than there was before. Yeah, there's 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 just some history that I thought was fun. So anyways, hope you guys are having a good holiday. Oh yeah, and uh I don't know if you guys saw but I, I got these stickers, these Dom ITG stickers. I still have a handful of them. So if anyone's interested, uh I don't have that many. I have like, you know, like eight or nine. Um if you'd like one then uh, hit me up on Discord or something, and uh, you got to give me your address, and I'll, I'll mail one out. But I don't have that many. But if you, the first like seven people who message me, I will send you one. Okay. Have a good one. Bye.